Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for tuning in to our Monday night Bible study here at Good Shepherd Baptist Church. Uh, please bow your heads as we pray. Father, we thank you for our time together tonight as we attempt to tackle this new subject on mental health disorders. We ask, oh God, that you will uh, sensitize our hearts, Lord, uh, simplify our communication, help us to be clear, straightforward, Lord, and, we, and help us, Lord, to speak in a way that glorifies you uh, and at the same time does not harm your people. I thank you, Lord, for giving us all an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church and, uh, and for the courage to put into practice all that we shall learn tonight. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. As you heard me mention in my prayer, we're going to be starting a subject tonight in our Bible studies going forward uh, regarding mental health. Uh, this is a, a topic that was presented to me over the summer by one of the members. They want us to talk in depth uh, about mental health, mental illness, as it were, uh, mental uh, health issues. And, uh, and where does all that fit into the kingdom of God? And uh, where do we all fit in as members of the Lord's church? So please uh, share um, this broadcast on your social media pages so that we can get this out to as many people as possible. And let's see what the Lord says um, to us, at least tonight, about mental health, <laughs> mental illness, and mental health issues. Um, so... You know, I raised the rhetorical question tonight, does uh, mental health really matter within the kingdom of God? And what we hope to do in this very uh, brief um, Bible study is to explore um, the nature between what are our contemporary concerns about mental health and mental illness and, uh, and see um, where does it fit in um, to the mission, the ministry, and the teaching of Jesus Christ um, and where does it fit in um, to uh, what we know to be life uh, in the kingdom of God? Let me give you a couple of things, just some um, uh, factual uh, and, and, excuse me, statistical information regarding mental health. We know that uh, common mental health issues affect 20% um, of our, our world, one in five persons. Um, suffering from at least a common mental um, disorder. Um, you have uh, persons uh, who are suffering from uh, major mental disorders. Um, those numbers are somewhere between one uh, to seven percent of all adults. All right. Um, we know that 10 to 20 percent of children and adolescents suffer from mental disorders. We also know that that uh, fifty percent of all mental illnesses begin by the age of fourteen. All right, and so this is important because mental health disorders begin early in life and they tend uh, to be chronic. Um, listen, they represent the leading cause of disabilities uh, across the globe. Yeah. One third uh, of, of years lived with disability are due to mental illness. There was a stalling fact that I read and that had to do with the fact that um, mental um, disorders um, shorten, shorten, excuse me, a person's lifespan. The life expectancy is reduced uh, between 10 to 20 years for those people who are suffering, listen, from major mental disorders, all right? And we know that behind the numbers, I'm just throwing a couple of things out here tonight, um, really trying to just drive home the notion that this is a serious matter and it's more pervasive than we think it is. Um, but you have to understand that behind the numbers, um, there are traumatized and hurting uh, and disoriented people uh, who have been torn apart on the inside. They are estranged from their families and their communities. And um, 
and stigmatized as well. All right. Um, and we've all seen it. Uh, I wish I had uh, the ability um, to even, in a very succinct way, share with you um, the signs and the symptoms of mental illness. But we all know that it varies from person to person. There are many of them. Um, and all of those signs and symptoms in some way affect what it is uh, for a person to, to, to be human. I mean, and so if, if a person is traumatized, they're hurting, they're disoriented, um, if, if they can't trust um, the inner voices or even the outer voices that they hear, um, then that person can no longer find ability, uh, excuse me, they, can no, they no longer have the ability, excuse me, to find meaning in what they experience. Um, they, they, they can't rely on their own beliefs. They can't remember their history. Um, they're not sure on what is true and what is not true. And so a person who's dealing with uh, mental illness, um, that person is living a life that is, that, that is being pervaded by anxiety and hopelessness. And uh, anybody, listen to me, who in an, unhe in an unhealthy way, <laughs> is dealing with anxiety and hopelessness. That kind of anxiety and hopelessness, it cuts to the core of who we are. It cuts to the core of how we experience ourselves and how we experience the world around us. All right? Um, so if we conceptualize um, these signs and symptoms, or even uh, group them according to the kind of concerns that 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 uh, mental health professionals identify. Um, then we can see that these are the same things. Listen, that Christians and other religious people talk about. Now we may talk about it. The church may talk about it one way, and uh, mental health professionals may talk about it in another way. But at the end of the day, we're all talking about the same thing. We're just using a different language. Um, and again, it has to do with how we experience life um, at um, our deepest levels. You know, our, what we believe, our capacity to, to find meaning, our ability to cope with adversity, how we behave as we relate to other people and so on. And so it's, it's just about self-awareness, self-understanding, um, interaction with others. And, uh, and again, there are people who are dealing with either common mental illness or major mental uh, health disorders. Um, uh, it affects, I don't wanna say it hinders, but because that's just, it's not all that it does, but it, it affects um, a person's ability to relate, all right? Um, what is also um, sad is that mental health problems uh, disproportionately affect um, people who are disadvantaged and those who are marginalized in society. Um, the poor, people who are homeless, uh, people who are in prison, uh, people in certain uh, ethnic groups, uh, uh, gender and sexual minority groups, um, deaf people, uh, so on. Um, so it's, you know, there is this uh, vulnerability paradox, you know, because you, that, now let me also say that people in wealthier countries with more resources, um, they experience um, a, a greater uh, mental health burden, let me say it that way, than poorer countries. Um, but uh, whether it's a wealthy country or a poor country, it is clear that generally those who have the least are the ones who suffer the most, all right? 
So, you know, mental health issue, mental health and mental illness is also uh, um, has within it an economic component that cannot be overlooked. Uh, so you have, you got the numbers, you got the economics, you have um, what it is doing to people socially and otherwise. And then beyond that, we have to realize that, that mental health problems are also associated uh, with um, with the fact that people with mental health disorders are often stigmatized, they're bullied, they're, they're prejudiced, uh, um, they, are, uh, they have to deal with social exclusion. Um, and so uh, people dealing with mental health issues and mental uh, uh, illness, um, you know, that in addition to their diagnosis, there is this social labeling, amen, that, you know, adds to the stigmatization. So, um, so we know that it's a real issue. We can't just overlook it. We can't gloss it. And just, you know, in a, in a uh, very unsensitive way, just label people as being crazy. Um, it's re it's real. And, um, and some of, if it starts, um, before a person reaches the age of puberty, uh, again, this is, this is stuff that we may see um, in a person's life as an adult, but it started when they were children. They probably don't even know where it began, and um, they feel like a prisoner in their own minds. Um, so the question I also, another question I also want to raise tonight by way of introduction, and what does the Bible say about all of that? I mean, what, I mean, surely, if this is an issue um, that is not only in our time, but it has been a part of human history for all time, surely the scriptures have something to say that can help us uh, understand and in some way navigate our way through um, dealing with our own uh, mental disorders or, or dealing with persons um, who are wrestling with mental disorders. All right. First scripture that I want to point us to tonight, that's probably as far as I'm going to get tonight, um, is the Gospel of Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, where Jesus says, and I read it to you from um, the Christian Standard Bible. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim freedom to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And so uh, we know this in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, 19, where Jesus stands up in the synagogue and reads out of the book as, as a way of announcing his ministry, um, to summarize his mission. And what Jesus says that I have good news, number one, uh, for the poor. Um, he said, I have good news for those finding themselves held captive. This can certainly be associated with mental illness. He said, I have good news for those living with disabilities. Amen. And I have good news for those who are struggling with oppression, all right? And again, when we talk about um, poverty, being feelings of being held captive, disability, uh, oppression, these are exactly issues um, that people with mental illness struggle with today, all right? Now, uh, perhaps in the first century, when Jesus was uh, reading these words, uh, and in the region of the world where he was there in Palestine, they may have had some very different understandings uh, about the nature of mental health compared to what our understanding of it today. Um, but I think there's little doubt, listen to me, that, that if we had lived in Jesus' day, 
we would understand mental health to be a priority within the context of his mission. And what's the point that I'm making? I'm making that the mission and ministry of Christ remains the same. And those of us who are uh, following Christ, we are told that the work that we've seen him do, that that work shall we be able to do and greater work shall we be able to do because the Lord has left us and come, gone back to the Father. All right. So if mental health was a priority within the context of Jesus's mission, then uh, mental health disorders, illnesses, mental health in and of itself uh, must uh, be prioritized within the context of the church's mission. All right. Um, so uh, how can I say this? Um, when we look at the miracles of Christ, um, the stories of uh, how Jesus healed in particular, um, these were demonstrations uh, of the coming of this kingdom. Uh, we are told that he healed people of many different conditions. We read the Bible, right? Uh, and the only story that I guess specifically sounds like the healing of mental illness in terms of, of uh, you know, how we define the day uh, was <clears throat> that man who was uh, possessed with many devils, the demoniac at Gerizim. And um, the Bible talks about his symptoms, um, that he was, uh, uh, as a result of his demonic oppression, um, that uh, it affected him in the area of his behaviors. Um, the Bible says he was difficult to restrain. He was howling. He was self-harming. And the Bible says that when Jesus encounters this man, the Bible says that the Lord heals him. He's restored by Christ to his right mind, to his right mind. All right. In today's uh, diagnostic terms, one might say that he was a maniac or he was suffering from, from mania um, that was probably associated with with, uh, with a bipolar disorder, all right? Again, but Jesus heals him. So we know that for the man to remain in that state um, in the presence of Christ was unacceptable. Jesus addressed, did not ignore, but Jesus addressed um, the, the man's situation and help the man to recover. As the Bible says that he was restored um, back to his right mind. Uh, so uh, when you think of that, of course, that's a, that would be considered to be a major uh, mental health disorder, but then there are common ones like anxiety and depression. Um, again, um, the Bible speaks quite a bit. Not only uh, does Jesus talk about it, but also the Apostle Paul talks about it as well. And um, and so, uh, you know, because we know that anxiety and depression are common mental disorders. Um, and, well, I should, excuse me, I should say that. Depression and anxiety is a key symptom in common mental disorders. Help. And uh, again, affect 20% of all the people in the world. All right, and so people sometimes we look at the at the uh, the teachings of Christ and the teachings of Paul. Um, it looks like the Bible is intends to make people feel guilty, as it were, for feeling anxious and for feeling depressed. Uh, but that would not entirely be true. Had we, uh, we well might say that it's true, but we know now that it's not entirely true uh, because we see Jesus give expression to his own agonizing anxiety and depression um, as he was meeting his fate um, in the Garden of Gethsemane. Um, you know, even the Apostle Paul, on another place in the Bible, he talks daily. <clears throat> about his anxiety that he had personally on behalf of the churches. And so, you know, Christ nor Paul, which are two examples, none of them was were, were able to sail through life 
all of life situations without some moments of anxiety and not some moments of depression. They were not apathetic. They were not uh, without any passion. Um, but more importantly, they understood their priorities and they contextualized, listen, their worries and turned them into prayer. Again, uh, sometimes a person with mental health does, does not have that capacity to, context, to con uh, contextualize their anxieties and worries and, and use it as a thing to which they will petition um, the Lord about in prayer. All right. So what I want to I want to sort of come to an end with this first part and tell you that life in the kingdom of God is not a life without anxiety. Um, if you're not anxious about anything, if you don't feel anything about anything, um, that means you don't care about it. Um, and so in the kingdom, it is it is it is what we worry about and it is what we do with our anxieties. that really matters. OK, so, you know, um, we worry about the wrong things. Sometimes we are anxious about the wrong things. And the Bible implores us, listen, don't be anxious about that and don't be depressed about that. Uh, and, and a lot of times, again, our anxieties and worries are a reflection of where our priorities truly are. That's why the priority of our life as believers uh, must be the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. We should not, we are not to be worried about those other things um, that God has promised already to take care of. Uh, but you can't walk around and not feel anything about anything. You just have to prioritize what you are concerned about, okay? And, um, and learn again how to conceptualize whatever your concerns are and turn them into petitions that you will take to the Lord in prayer. Um, so, so let me, let me close with this um, since I've uh, only got about eight minutes left. I want to suggest that from a Christian perspective, mental health is about our capacity to fulfill our vocation, both individually and collectively, within the kingdom of God, all right? Mental health, it's not about being right. It's not about uh, being perfect. It's about having the capacity to do what God has called us to do, amen. Uh, as individuals call us to do as a church within the kingdom of God, amen. Mental health is about our ability to do the thing that God has called us to do. What am I saying? I'm saying we have to make sure that mentally we are healthy so that we can serve God and serve his kingdom. Amen. This is why the Lord addressed it. This is why you and I ought to address it because uh, as a result of mental uh, illness and, uh, and uh, common and major uh, uh, mental illnesses and disorders, sometimes people are uh, or they have or their capacity is reduced they cannot effectively serve the kingdom of God in the way that God has called them to. Amen. It's all about glorifying God at the end of the day. All right. Sometimes, of course, we see people dealing with uh, mental illnesses and, you know, we don't want to see that person traumatized. We don't want to see that person hurting. We don't want to see what it's doing to them on the outside. But at the end of the day, what ought to grieve us the most and what ought to be our major concern is that they be healthy and whole enough to be whoever it is that God has called them to be. Amen. To to uh, have the capacity to uh, fulfill their assignment. Um, and, and that's it at the end of the day. You know, um, when you talk about demonic possession, when you talk about major mental health disorders uh, and so forth and, and common mental health uh, disorders, those individuals are reduced in some way and they just cannot um, live up to their calling um, because because of the disease and the disorder um, that is within them amen but but we ought to be concerned as members of the church to help people deal with that disorder um, those diseases um, and 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 help them to get hold, there's an anointing, Jesus said, that's upon me uh, for this particular area, amen. And we are 
to be in the business of helping people to become whole, amen, uh, helping them heal so that they can then go on and do those things that God has called them to do. We don't want them to be at a disadvantage in any way, amen. We don't want them, their abilities to be diminished in any way. We want them operating at full capacity so that God can get all the glory, all right? Um, you know, and so, so, so how does that happen? So we know we talk about mental health as well as we often we're talking about the brain and we're talking about the mind. And um, I totally understand that scientifically we're talking about the brain, scientifically we're talking, or psychologically we're talking about the mind. Um, and we know that that plays a major role. But it's also for us as a church, it's about us uh, helping people to be able to envision their place uh, within the picture of God's kingdom, amen, that he paints. You know, it's, it's about finding your place within the narrative of the kingdom. It's about knowing um, that God has included you, not excluded you, amen. And and whatever disorder and or disease is affecting you mentally and psychologically, it is to know that uh, that it that it is something that can be dealt with. It is something that can be overcome. Um, it is something that can be conquered in a person's life. Uh, and again, they can find their place in the kingdom of God. The worst thing is to have people feel that they are perpetually dis, uh, excluded. Um, from life in the kingdom of God, that I'm, I am reduced only to the disease and, and the disorder of my mind, and that I don't have the capacity um, to be whole, to live full, amen, to express all that God has put in me um, because of this one thing that's going on in my life. Um, so as members of the church, we have to be agents of healing and change, Amen. Uh, we must uh, work with others um, with the hope of them experiencing the power of transformation. Amen. That they can, again, uh, do whatever it is they need to do um, uh, for uh, the kingdom of God. So listen to me. I'm going to close with this. Listen, mental illness is not a failure of Christian faith. In other words, if somebody has dealing with mental illness, they ain't got no faith. No, mental illness is not a failure of Christian faith. It is a challenge to Christian faithfulness. Mental illness doesn't mean you don't have faith. Mental illness means uh, for you that you that that with that illness, you're going to be challenged to live faithfully as a Christian. And we want to bridge that gap. Uh, you know, we want to uh, shorten that distance, amen, help people get to that place where they're able to live faithfully as a Christian um, despite whatever mental illness uh, challenges they may have, all right? Um, and and this is, I'll, I'll close with it, this is, this is the incarnation of Christ. This is the incarnate nature of Christ. Uh, and he offers us a realistic hope Amen. And shows us that we are not alone. That he shares in the same uh, suffering that you and I share, in, and yet he was able to overcome it. It is challenging. Amen. I go back to the Garden of Gethsemane. I mean, if there was ever a point for him to turn around and go back, that could have been it for him right there. But he stayed the course. Amen. He overcame the, the feeling of anxiety and depression, the challenge to his mind, wondering, can I make a difference? You know, whatever the case may be. Um, the Bible says he was sweating, uh, sweat like drops of blood. I mean, it was, he was literally hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging, yeah, as he was um, on his knees in prayer. But thank God he was on his knees in prayer. He found the ability, amen, to take his anxiety and worry and turn it, turn it into the petitions with which he made his prayer, amen. And God gave him the strength to go on. Um, I was talking with someone years ago, and they said to me, Pastor said, um, I'm not concerned with being normal anymore. I'm just concerned with getting better day by day. 
So as I close with this tonight, because I got a long way to go with this, this is going to take a little more um, than I can give in a couple of nights, but I'm going to do my best anyway. But I'm going to close with this and tell you that your mental illness is not a failure of your Christian faith. It's just a challenge to Christian faithfulness. But I believe we can overcome it in the power of God and by the word of our testimony. Father, we thank you for the word tonight, this brief introduction as we move into the area of mental health illnesses and disorders, both common and major, and uh, where does that all fit into the kingdom of God? Does, does the Lord prioritize people who are dealing with those issues and how can they be transformed and changed and fulfill whatever it is um, that God has called them to so that they might live productive lives in society and glorify your name? and live a life of faithfulness. Lord, help us to expand this idea and notion that all of us are called to the kingdom of God. We are called to your eternal glory, and on the way there, we may have to suffer a while, but you're going to establish and strengthen and settle us. We thank you for that now in Jesus' name. Bless everyone who is on the broadcast tonight, listening and watching. We pray, oh God, that the Spirit has spoken to them uh, and taken this feeble attempt Lord, and made it clear um, to each one of them in their hearts, those who need to hear it. And I pray, God, they'll get that rhema word, that revelation, and it'll make the light bulb go off and set them down a new course and a different path towards wholeness and healing in Jesus' name. Again, Lord, I thank you for our time together. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Thank you again for tuning in. And I uh, look forward to coming back at you on mo next Monday. And we're going to break this thing apart. Um, and, and, you know, my foundations are a little uh, disjointed. But don't worry about it. As the lessons go on, we pray God's going to make this real clear. And we're going to know, amen, that we do have the power to overcome and even mental health disorders and challenges. Amen. That it is the will of God that we... Uh, prosper and be in good health even as our soul prospers we believe that healing is the children's bread and that's going to be where we're going to be going in these bible study lesson amen you can be set free by the power of god god bless you guys look forward to seeing you later on in the week uh, on wednesday and then again on next sunday until then may god's blessings continue to be yours